I know it's being recorded. I know. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Let me see if this works. Hang on. I haven't used my MacBook in ages. Kemp, can you hear us there? Can you hear me, Phil? Yep. Okay. You're a little quiet, but I can hear you. Because I probably, I haven't used this in so long. How come you went back to your MacBook? Um, because it was upstairs. Yeah, just cause. That's that totally was, acceptable. The other one's downstairs. <clears throat> yeah, just cause is totally acceptable. Well, I don't know what else. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what else to say to that. So, uh, and Kemp, we we can see you, but I don't think we can hear you. I can't see him. I just see fireflies. Yeah. So I think that's Kemp. But it's definitely him. It's not me. Yeah. So we'll give him a second, see if he... Is my mic okay or too low? Uh, no, I think it's fine. Yeah. And then I soak in some tea. So hopefully I can get through this without hacking. But I'm using this so I can mute myself quick. Um, All good. Yeah. All good. Let's just give... Uh... Have a chance to uh so it's nice to see you again young man always a pleasure always a pleasure with you mr chang always a pleasure i and just everybody spent, knows that i just spent part of the week with kenny at his at uh in his being a in native in your hood that is correct yeah yeah no, all good. And you got home okay, except you got a cold. Yeah, I got a cold, so better I apologize. Not, I'll sound a little funny. That better not mean we get colds, because I was with you yesterday, and the day before, and the day before that. And I really don't feel like being sick. Just saying. Yeah, hopefully, I think you got to drink some of that vitamin C stuff. Hey, I know where I can get that. Hmm. Yeah. I know where I can get that. Yeah. I, get for, I think I might get it for free even. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we'll, we'll give a Kemp a chance to call. Yeah. Out. So we've we've got we've got Kemp Edmonds. Hopefully we'll sort out some of these technical issues. He'll join us, but um he's got he's uh He's an interesting guy with the Canadian Workplace Culture Index, which is kind of interesting. Kenny and I, um, <clears throat> believe it or not, we actually did a little research because we, a lot. Uh, not, not a lot, lot. not a lot, but uh, but we actually did have a look because we weren't sure that we understood um, what Kemp uh, was representing. So so we actually had to do a little work. So actually, um, I was very sure that I had no idea what Kemp was representing. So when I did take a look at it, it was just because it was talking about culture and workplace culture yeah. and the timing, obviously, because he's no dummy. Couldn't be better. Uh, couldn't yeah. be better because I just even yeah. got off a meeting like 10 minutes ago mm -hmm. and the discussion did get to the usual. Okay. How are we going to go back to the office? What does that mean? What are mm -hmm. we doing? What's the, what, all the, all those discussions did come yeah. into play. Now, I yeah, don't know yeah, if that's yeah. where even Kemp's going with this or not. Don't know. Um, he's going to check. He's got his audio fixed up. Looks like momentarily here. So I think that's the part. Yeah. There he is. There he is. How's it going, gentlemen? Apologies for my right. uh, delayed no activation. Worries, no worries. No worries. I always we... love when I know someone who is technically capable has struggles <laughs> like I do because it just makes me feel all that much better. And everything on the show is really all about me. So I feel I, good. Right I have now. to apologize because it wasn't technical difficulties. Oh, it, yeah. Sorry, dude. It was just that I was busy doing other stuff. I was hoping for technical, like, and then I went no, back to being the knob of the group. Like I was, I was okay <laughs> for a second there. I was like maybe second, but at least I wasn't last like usual. Okay. That's <laughs> there you go, Penny. I, I won't take a run at you. I believe in, in creating uh, exceptional culture. So I, I won't, I won't mock you and I won't, uh, that could, that could be your guys. That could be your culture as an organization. You yeah. Know, so you have, oh, a hundred percent. That's well, our it culture. It definitely feels, feels like my culture. It feels like the culture and, I'm involved yeah, in. Yeah. 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 Lots yeah. Of yeah. Mocking. That makes sense with Kenny for sure. Lots, lots of mocking. Not liking it. <laughs> Not liking it. 
So anyway, you're here, which is nice to nice I to am. see that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good to be here. Yeah, no, we're pretty cool. So it, it, we were just saying that we we um if you've ever listened to the podcast, it's probably pretty clear that we are not prepped. Um, we don't time, listen, but yeah, I, I don't even know who's on. Prepped. Oh, we're totally not prepped. Are you kidding me? We're, we're yeah. perfectly not prepped. Yeah. Great. Um, and we've maintained that. But we did for you because I looked at it and I thought, I don't know what the hell he's doing, but it sounds pretty cool. <laughs> and it's definitely timely. So I sent it to Chang. Yeah. I said, okay, mm -hmm. you look at it. He's mm -hmm. going, hmm, this is interesting. Huh. Sounds timely. Yeah. Not 100% clear, I don't think, on exactly what you're doing. Really? That thought, one minute okay. video? My magic explainer video does leaves more questions than answers? Everything doesn't matter. No, I, I think do a two-hour um, video and I still have 50 questions. What are you talking it, about? it answers some things, right? But I guess, cool. I guess for us, like the, the for anyone listening to this, you'll find the we'll put the link in the yes. if you're okay with that. Um of course. Camp, but but we'll put the we'll put the link in the podcast episode. But um it is a good explainer. I think for us it was uh where do you where do you fit in that and then and then um and where do you go with it like what do you do yeah what do you do this? What what's, do you, what's the gig yeah, yeah no, i'm, I'm yeah, happy right? like, i love talking about it so I'm more than happy to talk about what we built and how organizations mm. use it and I'd what our what our thinking is as we go ahead sort of three six twelve fifty six months you know we have yeah, plans yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah. everything's about every day and all the hard work right atomic habits micro actions yeah that's where shit happens so, exactly so, um, so we've got Kemp on now. We, we did a little intro because I think um, I think I understand now the the other your Fireflies AI thing is on. I guess it's a note taker. You can kick it. You can kick yeah. it. It records the meeting. It's yeah, it's for sales okay. meetings. It just okay. automatically joins every meeting with us. Okay. Um, do, do you want me to kick it or I can leave? I, it makes no you difference. You can kick it. Us. Kick yeah? it. Okay. Kick it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, should I? Should I avoid swearing? Like, tell me a little bit about what? No, no, no we don't. You care. can do whatever. I'm an East fan. Like, come on, seriously. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was born in Trail. There's, there's pretty much no rules. Mm, should I answer this phone call? I don't know. No, I, I think we've that. even let people do that. I, you know, I wouldn't recommend it, but I think we probably let people do that one too. And the Phil and I just talk to ourselves. <laughs> I'm guessing it's going to be uh, CBSA that I have a package that has some that has been stopped at the border with some. Have you guys heard that one yet? That's the newest one. Comes up. I haven't had that. Oh wow, goodness. you're so lucky. I get them. I, I've probably gotten it in Mandarin because they yes. think I speak Mandarin. Oh, those so ones. Oh, I get those all the time. Yeah. Okay. They think I, I speak Mandarin. Oh my god. As well. I, I think I've been executed in numerous countries because I haven't yeah, paid yeah, some yeah. tax or I've done yeah. something somewhere. I don't know what the hell I've done. Your oh. personal identity, you know, your your yeah, individual yeah. has been a, issued a warrant for oh your arrest. God, honestly, <laughs> call the police right now uh, or this number. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Man. All right, so so we've introduced you. Do you do you want to? Why don't you? So our kind of mo is is uh, to have you jump in, introduce yourself, and then uh, maybe tell us a little bit about you, and then how you got to uh, what you did, and then what you do. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, and thanks for introducing me. I really appreciate that. Um, uh, as shared, uh, my current project is the Canadian Workplace Culture Index. Um, but everything started uh, nearly forty years ago on a rainy April night. Uh, but why don't I start in a, oh, a little okay. more realistically um, in, with my career? Uh, we don't need to. Do you want oh, okay. to have the whole podcast be me, be me telling me my, my life story? Probably yeah. not. Um, see what happened on that night. But yeah, yeah. I'm just guessing. <laughs> I, I came into the world on that night. Um, so uh, I, I guess I should start at BCIT. I went to BCIT where I really enjoyed the applied learning style, the very pragmatic education that I received around marketing management. Um, whenever I get involved with an organization, I remember it was like Bell Canada before that and in BCIT itself, I get really dedicated to the organization and the brand and the business. I did that with BCIT. Around that time, they were just starting to use social media. And so were a lot of people. It was the late aughts, mid to late aughts. And uh, I was sitting in class using Twitter search to teach myself way more things than I was learning from the, from the lectern. And uh, I started to help BCIT with, with their Twitter. And after I graduated, I tweeted them and said, you have any jobs over there? And they responded publicly and said, uh, nope. And they sent me a DM and said, call me. And so I called them and they uh, took, they decided not to buy just two bus stop bench ads for the whole year and pay me to be sort of the unofficial director of social media. Uh, I worked there as the unofficial director of social media, as well as developing the first social media communications or social communications courses. They integrated into a certificate. And then I worked to develop um, the center for social media in business and media. 
And what that was, was a part of the business and media department at BCIT. And we just packaged together courses and worked to create certifications, um, a one-year cool. cert program, a two-year diploma. Um, that was, and then the reverberations of the 2008 economy hit my role. It was a bit of a first in, first out kind of scenario. And so I moved on. It was the best thing that could have happened to me because I then stocked the Hootsuite job board and was able to join Hootsuite. Uh, uh, I think I was employee number 25 um, and had sort of the experience of my life there. Uh, same deal. I had always been a user and I loved this platform and thought it was so amazing. I remember learning that it was from Vancouver and just being so, so excited. Um, and so my, I had sort of five or six or seven different jobs at Hootsuite. Um, whenever I talk about it, I say I was a settler and people say, well, what does a settler do? Well, a settler goes into an organization where things are new or unfinished and they develop uh, and build out how processes and systems will work for different departments. The first one I did was the education group and that was sort of video training for the platform. The next one was enterprise support. So there's only free support before that. Um, and then I worked on account management and the training uh, and the professional services. I remember our competitive advantage at one point was, hey, if you go with those other, those big guys, they're gonna charge you all these, all this money for training hours. But you know what? We give you unlimited training with Kemp. And then probably 12 to 16 months later, uh, I was billing out at lawyer's rates uh, for our training. So it was like 200, 250. And one of the most interesting things I learned from there that I tell a lot of people is, if you're selling software into the into enterprise and you don't have setup and services, they're gonna wonder what's up. Right. So um, charging that 5,000 bucks on top of your you know $15,000 a year thing for a setup is what they expect. And if they don't see it, they're like kind of question marks on their faces. So that was a really good experience for me. Um, moved into being sort of the, the head solutions consultant or sales engineer. And my job was really to be the product and market expert riding along with salespeople who drove their relationships. Uh -huh. um, and we closed a ton of business. Um, and it was really exciting and awesome. We, I, I was part of a group that helped grow the company to a thousand people, uh, offices around the world. Um, and I think when I started, we had 20 enterprise customers. And when I left, we had over 2000. Um, and yeah, that was just such an amazing experience, but sometimes you got to go to grow. And that was the reality for me. I was heading down a narrow and narrow sort of technical and product sales path. Mm -hmm. And I really am a sort of COO is kind of my sort of way of looking at things. I love to help people build their business from the ground up from scratch, develop all the systems and how uh, we sell. So uh, the next thing I did was I moved to Kelowna to work for a company called FreshGrade. FreshGrade is like a private Facebook that's all about a child's learning that's shared by uh, social stakeholders like parents and grandparents and siblings and then educational stakeholders like tutors and teachers. Um, and what an incredible experience it was that's working cool. in education. That sounds really passionate cool. teachers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm a bit loquacious, so I can talk a lot, as you can imagine. So if you need to interrupt me, just, uh, just Go. let me know. No, I mean, so um, far, okay. so far, it all makes sense, right? Like, so I have uh, the same sort of settler sort of stuff that you do getting into retail tech. Um, so very similar. And then, yeah, interesting. The um, the social network for kids it sounds a bit yeah. like um, like a top hat, but a little bit a little bit different right so yeah quite yeah. private administrated yeah. by the school district most often or the teacher is sort of the the primary like okay. uh, component yeah, uh, yeah. proponent there yeah. uh i didn't finish my settler story though so when you're a settler you go in you dig the ground you build like the first aqueducts and all the yeah. first systems and the first little hut and then your job's to find who's going to be the mayor of this town or this yeah. department that I built. And so you're hiring somebody who can then build on that. So that's kind of the yeah. idea of a settler. And then you move on to the yep. next thing that needs to be settled, yeah. uh, so to speak. Um, so, uh, yeah. So then I, I moved up to Kelowna and worked with FreshGrade, a really incredible experience um, and, a, and an interesting company. Recently sold, actually, to uh, one of the largest Montessori networks in the world or the, the largest Montessori network in the world. Um, and then I moved on to work for another uh, big company, well-known company in Kelowna called Get in the Loop. Get in the Loop is a double-sided marketplace uh, where you have businesses on one side and you have consumers on the other. Imagine oh, cool. if there was something like Groupon, but it was yeah. really for, more for coupons and deals and loyalty. And uh -huh. if you never paid Groupon, all you did was you went to those businesses that promoted those offers through that network and you got the offer, you showed the offer on your phone and were able to redeem it that way. More, more akin to coupons and loyalty programs than to inter middleman uh, scenarios with massive uh, deals like, uh, like the Groupon. That was really cool because um, 
Mario Newman Food Suite, really inspired leader and founder, um, an amazing guy named Matt Crowell. And, and there's nothing like working for somebody who wakes up every morning thinking about their business and goes to sleep every at night thinking about it. It's so inspiring and easy to get behind them and, and mm-hmm. help them build it out. Um, so uh, my, my wife and I realized that Kelowna was a bit small for us. Um, and um, we were we born and raised in Vancouver in the city, both of us. And it was just, uh, it, it felt a bit small, a great place to visit for a few weeks a year. We still own property there, but uh, we moved back to Vancouver. And I joined a company called Digital Media Academy. Digital Media Academy okay. started in 1999 on the campus of Stanford University, providing teachers and students education uh, about computers and technology. At that time, you can imagine it was Adobe Photoshop and Publisher and those kind of things. And today it's yeah. artificial intelligence and yeah. uh, JavaScript and Python and uh, robotics and all these wonderful programs, STEM and STEAM learning. Um, and the job there was to transition the company from the previous iteration, which was a re- you know, it had 40 people at an office that had a back a warehouse in the back that was down the road from Netflix. You can imagine in Los Gatos, California, you can imagine the cost that might be associated with something like that. Um, and we transitioned the business to five people working out of a houseboat on Granville Island in Vancouver um, and still ran uh, summer camps uh, across North America at 12 different universities, Stanford, Harvard, um, NYU, UBC, U of T, that kind of thing. And of course, COVID came and uh, transformed the business completely. Um, I, you know, I'd really rebuilt, I rebuilt the entire tech stack, um, saved the company almost 80% on operational costs. And you can imagine the savings on the employees uh, full-time from 40 to five. Um, so yeah, they're still going, still going strong. Um, but I think I was talking to somebody about this last night, you know, I like to help people build their businesses and, and transform their businesses. And, you know, sort of there's a timeline about that. And sort of once we're, once we're through that, sometimes, unless it's a rocket that I'm excited to ride, you know, it's sometimes time for me to go. Um, and so uh, I have teamed up with a, a pal that I met 15 years ago at the Vancouver Board of Trade uh, and another inspiring leader. And um, he runs a company called the Reframe Group. And the Reframe Group is a very different kind of insurance company that does group benefits, group retirement, commercial insurance, mm-hmm. uh, personal lines, all kinds of insurance um, and that kind of thing. And he had this idea and this whole idea of launching um, the Canadian Workplace Culture Index. He wanted to launch a report, an index, and a certification program. And when I arrived, um, the idea was that it was going to build out a report and do that for a year or so and use the data from the report to create this index. Um, Luckily, they had begun a relationship with the Angus Reid Institute. Um, one of the most well-known non-for-profits doing reporting and research about yeah. the opinions of Canadians. Um, and so, um, yeah, so that's what I've been doing since April uh, of 2021. And so we launched in September and what we've launched is we, we do not assess people's workplace culture. We have created an index or a benchmark that represents the Canadian, the, the opinions of the average Canadian about workplace culture. And we allow organizations to use a modern conversational chat survey that's optimized for mobile. Imagine a chat bot meets text messaging, meets um, a chat bot meets text messaging, uh, meets Google Forms. And so that's what we have um, for employees. It takes about five to seven minutes uh, for the project manager, or the lead, it takes about 20 or 30 minutes. Um, We're really obsessed with saving time and providing mass amounts of value. Not only we churn out scores and percentiles and, you know, industry against industry averages and national averages, but we also provide an actionable insights report. So, you know, taking my educational background, we group organizations into three different categories, emerging, evolving, and excelling around seven different workplace attributes, an overall score, along with attributes like workplace satisfaction, company care, diversity and inclusion, employee connection, information and recognition and loyalty. And we provide them with insights. You know, here are 10 or 12 ideas about how you can improve this particular score area. We worked with our board of advisors and HR professionals uh, to do that. And so now we're selling into, you know, people and culture slash HR and the C-suite to provide Canadian workplace culture certification. Um, And that's a good roundup of, uh, of me in my professional career for the last 15 years or so you're a busy boy <laughs> yeah busy quite busy boy. i um busy boy. the i i 
I uh, identify with a lot of those things, kind of uh, going in and building, kind of the forming and the norming, storming and the forming. Uh, but when we get to norming, I'm out. Uh, <laughs> um, so so I, I uh, identify with lots of those things. That's, it's very cool. So the, the current venture that you're in, so it's it's mm -hmm. really, it there's, um, so I appreciate the, the technology, I think, um, a, a, a lot of times, right? Like culture takes a long time. I've come from companies where they're almost fanatical about it, but a, a satisfaction survey, you know, it takes, uh, it's, it comes once every two years and it takes, you know, four months to compile another month to put together and then another month to publish. Um, and then you get countless committees that come out of it. Right. So, so kind of been there, done that. This is cool because it, it sounds like you, you really with, with a half hour or an hour with, with whoever is leading this exercise, you can start to drive, um, you know, you can, you can drive a conversation to find change. Um, which yeah. Is really yeah. Interesting. I think there's a really good uh, story there that we like to tell, which is, there's kind of two things. One is um, a lot of, a lot of people let us know about, um, they tell us about, they're concerned about survey fatigue. And it's usually not strategic people leaders that are concerned mm -hmm. about survey fatigue. It's kind of other people like, oh, yeah. And when we talk to strategic people and culture leaders uh, or leaders of an organization that thinks strategically about people and culture, they say there is no survey fatigue. There's lack of action fatigue. And so what happens oh, is, to your point, they spend the great. four months to do all this stuff and they get the survey yeah. and they get the data. And actually, this is like one of our main theses about why I've created what we've created around actual insights is there's no real value in data and numbers. There's only value in analysis and insight and, insight. and deriving Correct. insights. Right, and yeah. then you get all the value comes from the actions action to optimize yeah. your business based yeah. on those insights. Right. And I think we have a problem where everyone wants data, but, you know, and I always say, well, 5% of organizations do the take action based on the insights, you know, 70% or 25, 20% 20 do the insights analysis and 75% are sitting there going, we got the numbers, we're doing great. And it's like, I worry about that, you know, that concerns me. Um, so, you know, we often talk competitively, hey, so have you ever engaged a consultant around this kind of thing? Oh yeah, we engaged a consultant, you know, they, they, you know, and this consultant will take their kind of stock survey that's super long, way too long, right? Mm -hmm. People get so tired. And so we've, ours is like five to seven minutes for the employee, really tight really easy but if they have these super long surveys and then they get to customize them a little bit and then okay cool and then we'll run the survey and we'll get the data and that costs like five figures minimum yeah. <laughs> right and, and then after after they do that it's like okay cool well um you know it's another you know 5k or another five five figures for the report about what you should do and then if you want help to do it it's another x k right. and it's just becomes this sort of like wow i'm just paying and paying and paying and so what we're here to say is like, hey, if you're a company that's 100 employees or less, it's $1,500. Uh, it maxes out at um, $5,000 for a, a team of up to 5,000 employees and with custom pricing beyond that. Um, and this can be done like that, right? It's done super rapidly. Not only are we providing you with the raw data itself, but hey, here's how you compare it to the national average. Here's your percentile. So here's how you can take action to improve your business. So you don't even need to do the analysis and insights you get the action items right away. So um, it's a really good point that you make. And thanks for helping me highlight that. So yeah. who's, without, you don't have to tell me like specifically. So who's calling you and using this? And what are they, what are they trying to do with this? Because most of our listeners are going to be um, smaller companies, uh, yeah. probably lots of entrepreneurs, which in you know, a one person company, the survey is pretty quick. And nobody's listening anyway, because you got 5,000. Go. <laughs> but it's usually so, companies 10 to 50 people. But so who are you guys? Yeah, who's knocking so, at your door? Uh, who's, so who's knocking at our door are smaller companies. And the reason yeah. that smaller companies are knocking at our door is because they either do not have these programs um, in, in existence yet. Uh, they want to, you know, they're in a competitive hiring environment and they want to have a competitive advantage. Um, but they also need data. And they don't have the time and the systems and the structures that others do. The truth is that every organization is our customer. But you can imagine that when, if, when I talk to, if I talk to, uh, let's say a 1000 person company that's been going with our competitor for 10 years, you know, they're going to ask me, well, what's the reputation of this? Well, I'm like, well, we've been around a month. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the recognizability is low, but I can tell you that we're going to provide way more value than any other program that in time, if you're an early adopter, there's going to be many advantages 
uh, both financial um, in the future. We have some great plans for our loyal early customers. Um, and also in terms of the insights and the value that we have to offer. So there is, there is also this, uh, on, on one axis you have time to implementation. And then there access you have number of employees, right? And so you know we're engaging companies with more than a thousand employees, more than five thousand, and it sounds like it's going to be like you know maybe next fall we might that might be the earliest time to roll right. it out. So you can kind of so our sweet spot is uh, you do have to have a minimum of ten employees, but we do also have partners, uh, consulting partners, mm -hmm. and referral partners. So if you're a one person operation and you work with businesses maybe in a marketing or a branding or a PR or a human resources yeah. consulting capacity, yeah. or you're an agency of some kind, you know, we'd be a great solution for some of your customers, whether that's to improve employer brand or to get data and insights. Um, in some cases, some consultants that we're working with are actually using it as a diagnostic assessment. So at the beginning of their seven, you know, six or yeah, five, yeah, six yeah. figure engagement, yeah. they're like, hey, we'll do this thing. And then after yeah. we're done, We'll wait six weeks for all the things we've done or you know, a quarter for all those things to happen. And then we'll do it again, yeah. see the Delta. So those are some of the ways that we're working with smaller organizations or smaller entities, less than 10 people or agencies yeah. that kind of group. Right. Um, but yeah, the sweet spot is that 10 to 50 person company. They're in tech, they're in modern food and beverage. Um, they're, they're in manufacturing. Um, and they have a strong employer brand that they want to actually level up a little bit as well. So right. that's kind so of let's, let's do it this way. So let's say we have people who are listening and say, I think I get it, but I don't really get it, or I'm not too sure exactly what, what data I'm trying to pull from my employees. Mm -hmm. Like, am I trying to pull a happiness meter? Am I trying to pull, uh, like, what am I trying to, to grab from the workplace index? Like, and I, I'm asking for not a specific example, of course. but like, Give me something that someone would ask and then they'd say, okay, I get it. And this is what I'm going to try to do, or because you're going to help. Do you guys help do the analysis or do you expect them just do their own analysis? So, so again, like, so what we deliver is we deliver the data. So, right. Hey, here's how everyone responded. We, we are very serious about anonymity and privacy of employees. So we do protect all of their anonymity Perfect. and privacy. So there's no look through line to say like, Oh, like that Bobby person's this that. age, this 10, well, there's no yeah. names, but it's like uh, that age, that is. tenure, that ethnicity, that yeah. department. Oh, I know who that is. Yeah. Right. So there is no spreadsheet where you get to see all the mm, information yeah. and everything cut connected to one another. Um, but we're going to deliver the responses to each individual question. We, we also, like qualitative responses through two engaging questions. One is, hey, you're out with family and friends on a beautiful summer day and the topic of work comes up. People are curious about what it's like to work at your company. What do you what tell do you them? Yeah. yeah. And then the other one is kind of comes oh, at the interesting. end. And, it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting question. yeah, they are interesting responses and people feel quite comfortable based on the ones that I've had, I've got to see uh, to share their honest feedback. Um, really? The last one is, oh yeah. The last one is an open mic. Um, and it basically says, hey, oh, tell my. us everything. The good, the bad, the ugly. What do you want to see? What do you hate? Um, and there's always some interesting ones in there. Um, so that and, we deliver and is all the that. open mic mm -hmm. actually an open mic? Like is it's actually like a recorded video or audio they file? They can record they can record a okay. video and then the video is transcribed into text okay. and then we provide oh, the okay. transcribed text okay. version. Wow. Right. We were initially gonna uh, provide the videos, but they're they're it's pretty un undersubscribed, as you might imagine. It's people just yeah, what's your I, face is there? It's I don't pure... see a lot of people lining up for that for, uh, as an employee. Yeah. So I think I, I don't know. Uh, you exactly. know, K Kenny and I are, are on podcasts a lot, right? But we have lots of audio tells, right? So like to anonymously open mic wouldn't, it, it wouldn't be anonymous at all. Like, <laughs> like they'd spot yeah. Kenny, like oh. in the first two words, I think. And then, and then me in the first four words, maybe, but um, yeah, it wouldn't. Be, oh yeah, totally. Be great. Yeah. yeah. So so what we're doing then is, so you have all that, that's the stuff that you may do your own analysis of, mm -hmm. but then we're providing you with these scores and these definitions. We also tell people and show them what, what questions are weighted to which scores. So diversity and inclusion has seven questions weighted to it. Um, things like, I feel like I'm gonna be my, my authentic self at work. Um, and then, and we have an ENPS score in there. How likely are you to recommend working here to other people? Um, you know, we have, when we go to loyalty, it's one of our most interesting. So not only, you know, to build this index, we surveyed more than 3000 Canadians and, um, you know, some really interesting insights. So loyalty is made up of two questions. One is, do you see yourself at your company in five years? And the other one is, would you leave your current role for the same position in another company for a 10% raise? 
60 60 percent of canadians said yes they'd actually leave yes that's 60%. Our, that's that's how loyal we are for a 10 percent bump well the, the important thing to know about that is we should survey every country and every place before we think that that's a bad score right i think um you you are right to think that so that's, when we look at all sound, the, doesn't sound that good it is not good so just, oh, just to give you an no, idea so but, yeah sorry it's the truth please continue it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, I think it's just the truth of people's lives, right? It's, especially if you think about the distribution of people that might work hourly wages, right? If you're in that position, yeah. you know, I think, whereas if you're on the higher end, I think you're less likely. And that's actually mm-hmm. what we saw. So when we looked at age, we saw that older people, unless they were in retirement age, right. they were much more likely to be super loyal. Whereas younger people, likely based on sort of their own lifestyle and the types of jobs they have, you know, under 25s and even under 35s, uh, loyalty was a lot lower. Yeah, um, that makes sense, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But, and then, but we, it also we, makes we, sense we, from that regard as well, right? Is, is when you get into an organization, your, your biggest bump is when you sign in. Right. Like, so when you sign up, that first offer letter is your bump. So wherever you came from, right. Like, cause the reality is between 25 and 35, right. Like particularly if you like your fortune 500 company, the it's, it's, you know, there's a template, right. Like, so you, you don't yeah. get very far. Right. And, and you get, you get the 1%, you know, cost of living raise a year. And then, you know, they make you work pretty hard for the other 1% that you might call, you know, you got to, achieve 100% of your personal objectives, the company needs to hit there, you know, in order to get the other 1%. So it's 2%. But if I move for the same job at another company, I get 10 right off the get go. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. A, that's a really good point. Yeah. Um, I, I, I really want to make sure I answer Kenny's question mm-hmm. about what we're providing people um, and just finish that up. And really, yeah, yeah. for me, yeah. it, it's, it's really about this combination of an improvement employer brand to help you recruit and retain top talent, right? This is something that our partners are putting on their website. They're featuring prominently, you know, they're getting behind it to show people that we are a Canadian workplace culture leader. Um, and this is what, what that represents and what that mm-hmm. means. Um, and then, um, of course, all that data is valuable. But of course, then we provide the actionable insights. These are specific to-dos that will help you to improve these specific areas of your, of your organization. And of course, you know, when I say those workplace attributes and give them titles and company care and all that, it's a bit nebulous. But when you see and understand that loyalty is made up of these two questions and uh, diversity inclusion is made up of these seven questions, it becomes a lot clearer. And that's included in our executive summary, a right. breakdown of what questions represent uh, are weighted to which categories. And, uh, and I know you're brand new and, and I get mm-hmm. that, but it is kind of cool because you know how we are, like we have, you know, BC's best company to work for, Canada's best company to work yes. for. Like I'm assuming yes. this is this could be the next thing. I'm going to look at the work cult, uh, workplace culture index and say, oh shit, that one's that's that's the numbers I want to go to. I, I can get, yeah. I get that, but when you're going into your actionables or with um, the companies, like so the leaders come in, hey Camp, you know what we want to do the survey. Um, I'm assuming they're doing it because they think they're probably not as bad as it may came out come out because typically most people don't want to know too much bad. So they probably got they're probably skewed a little maybe one way. If something comes back, surveys are coming back. Are they actually? looking at it and truly wanting to action on it. I would assume that if you're paying the money, you'd want to, but are you finding people more shocked than not? Again, I get only a month into it. It's a, it's a great question, Kenny. Um, and it's a great question for a number of reasons. It, you know, and I think speaks to our strategy and the way we see things is we know what we can control and we know what we can't control. Right. And what we, what we can't control is how an organization, I remember being a consultant and drafting up strategic plans that were super detailed and exciting and awesome. And then be like, all right, are you going to hire the person and get going on this? And they cut me the check and they said, nope. <laughs> and I thought, okay, like, I guess I got paid, but that's kind of sad, right? You create this thing yeah. and nothing happens. Yeah. So, Which is probably why um, we're asking is we've all, we're all in consultant yeah, modes. Yeah, so I'm kind yeah. of trying to figure out, I've, I've done it enough times too. We're thinking, well, I'm not just sure why the hell you called me and I was a waste. Yeah, I'm sad now, right? Just, because I, I showed you the way out. And you don't uh, want to take it. I think, well, why'd you ask? Yeah, yeah. There's so many value components to what we've created, right? So that that's how we work. It is, is there, it, you know, you could be here for the data. You know, we have somebody who we talk to them and they're like, yeah, we were just at a strategic meeting. We need data. So I'm going to sign up today. So they bought today. Yeah. Uh, we made it seamless. So you can actually go on the website. We've also priced it in a way that's super accessible. Yeah, yeah. Right? right. So it's not brutal so for talk, a small company. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so when we talk about, you know, the return on investment and the time, so I'm glad right. you brought up the competitors because man, the competitors each of them is a 
very, some of them have been using the same criteria for more than 20 years to evaluate companies, right? Like some Not of them surprising. ask, yeah, great I'm places to because the list never changes yeah. either. So I've, that's kind of indicative <laughs> that I mean, think, okay, yeah. obviously ask the same people the same thing over and over. I mean, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And none of them are measuring anything against the opinions of the average worker in your nation or in your industry. None of them. Um, you know, in fact, only one of them uses uh, employee feedback and they just need, it needs to be 70% positive. Nobody knows what that means. They're also asking for 20, 25 minutes of every employee's time to do that. And then they ask for a culture brief, which is this like sort of strategic document that takes HR and the people leaders in an organization tens of hours to create. It's not used to decide if you qualify. It's used to build a little web page on their website about your company. And, you know, just that kind of, there's so much cost to sit through people's time. And as organizations and businesses, we just don't think about that enough. And so, you know, we really value that. So, you know, between the little amount of time it takes and the low cost, if you just want data, it's worth it. If you want an awesome badge to validate your, your workplace culture that you can leverage and put out into the world, it's worth it. If you want actual insights and you're going to take action and improve it, it's worth it. Right. So if you want all three of those things, you're getting a lot of value for your money. Right. Um, so to your point, we know what we can control and can't control, and we cannot control what an organization is going to do or if they're going to action or activate on those. We talked to a lot of organizations and we talked to a lot of partners. And the, one of the things that we're looking at down the road is to have a sort of consultancy, not our own consultancy necessarily, but trusted consultants that have been in the industry for 5, 10, 15, 20 years specializing in different industries to right. do people and culture. And so our plan is to actually be referring to trusted partners um, and saying, hey, you know, if you if you need assistance to activate on this, here's what you can do. And then we're also working in specific industry verticals to create custom workshops that when you come out of the program that, hey, here are the four workshops, they're going to happen on these dates or they're recorded or they're virtual and they'll help you to go from I've, I, when I was a teacher, I developed this thing I called the infinity complex. And the infinity complex is this thing in your mind where if you're starting and you don't know how to do something and you want to, let's say you want to learn how to make podcasts, but you don't know the step between start and making podcasts, your brain basically says, forget about it. It's going to take forever. Yeah. But when Phil and Kenny come along and go, hey, here's my ebook. It costs 99 cents. It's the 10 steps to start your podcast. You break the infinity complex, people have to do as they know what to do. And so we really need to, you know, we, we need to continue to do that for our partners and our certifying you know, certifying companies is to help them pro- provide for them a little bit of a roadmap to execution and to, to do it. It's funny because the actual insights report, um, the people and culture leaders often do not share it with executives. And the reason they don't share it with executives is it's a bank of ideas about how you can improve these specific areas of workplace culture. It's not a to-do list. Right. And they don't want they don't want anyone to think of it as a to-do list because it's actually quite long. It's like a, you know, an eight page document with a dozen sort of ideas on each page. So, yeah. So that's, uh, you know, that's a little bit about what it's about. You know, anyone who's interested in getting a VIP tour or learning more, they can email me directly. Kemp at cultureindex.io. It's interesting. It's interesting. It's timely. And I think totally timely, especially right yeah. now, as we're all trying to figure out if we're going back, who's going back, why are we going back? Do but we I want think to go it back? also, and it equips what I, I think what, what we, I think what attracts us to uh, attracts me and, and us to these things is you're helping, you know, cause you know, I, I work for J and J, I work for a bunch of big companies. They have lots of resources at their disposal, right? So being able mm-hmm. to figure out, Who's happy? Who's not happy? What do I got to fix? Yeah, you know, you could, you could, you literally, you do this every couple of years, you commission a a big project team, they go out and design nice templates, but your average company, you know, like 10 to 20 employees, man, is it difficult, right? Like even 10, 50, you're in survival mode, man. Like you're just, you know, what you're trying to do every morning is make sure the door is still open. Well, and you got things to do and people are running. Nobody's really sometimes taking the, the but you, and you develop biases, right? Because you're, you're, you're action oriented. So you're going to wind up, you know, inevitable. whatever that loud voice is, you know, all of a sudden you've got office policies that surround kind of like three or four people because it works for them. Right. But right. You, you go blind to everybody else. Right. right. So and then nobody a, talks either. And nobody says anything because nobody's asking the questions. It's difficult, right? It's a little, it environment, all comes you know? from the top. 
it, it like, does it's, yeah. it's 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 interesting because like it's mm-hmm. it's so meta actually because you know i'm i'm selling into human resources people and culture and leadership and i'm learning about the unique nature of the relationships between those entities at all these different companies and all these different verticals and we are not in the people and culture world that we want to be in. I'll tell you what, um, you know, and, and, and the industries are different too, right? Yeah. Um, the, the construction company with 350 employees might have a similar people and culture operation to the tech company with 50 to eight employees, mm-hmm. right? You know, the manufacturing yeah. company uh, with a thousand employees, you know, might be similar to the tech company with 150 in terms of how big is HR? What do they do? And a lot of organizations, leadership just this is actually one of the sort of sad stories i've heard from human resource leaders is they are handcuffed they cannot so when they talk up to the c-suite everyone's like is everything okay like we're retaining we're recruiting cool keeping costs down great that's what you got to do keep it up you know? yeah and so, they, and so they can't there's no complaint there's <laughs> yeah. no complaining up there's no like advocating for replaced culture <clears throat> you know in those types of scenarios and then there's no complaining down either because you are human resources and you're the leader. So you can't yeah. really tell your team about the struggles you have with, you know, the C, C-suite and, and executives to right. get the buy-in on some of the more progressive things or innovative things you want to do. And so it's been really interesting hearing those stories and be, sort of placing ourselves in the middle alongside that person and really listening to them and understanding their challenges. Um, we got a long way to go is what, I, what uh, I've learned. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah. So, so at that point, so like right now, these companies that are 10 to 20 people or 10 to 50 people even. So who's knocking? Is it their, the leader of the company? Is it that, because in most of these companies, the designated HR person, because nobody knows HR, because they basically, I mean, you're just praying to God you don't say anything that gets you in huge trouble or half the time they don't even know if they've said it anyway, so it doesn't matter. But mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? Like, so who's knocking? Because do leaders either, actually either knock and say- Yes. Yes. The progressive CEO and often the progressive CEO who between them and finance, that's HR. So that's the sort of uh, 30 most small to 50. Yeah, 100%. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so finance, so they're finance like, ends up with HR. Yeah. I don't know how yeah. that works. Yeah. And then, and then the, yeah, even if this, even if the C-suite has HR and if the C-suite's in, they punt it to that person and say, let's do it. Right. And so, you know, that's the easiest one for us. Although it's always interesting because then it's like, you know, the human resource team is like, oh, well, we have all the things that we're planning and these strategies, you know, how long is this going to take? And because of the predecessors in the market, they think everything takes a long time. Right. And we're like, no, no, this doesn't take it. For example, I was talking to somebody like, oh, well, it's the conference season. So all our sales people are at these conferences. So they're really mm-hmm. busy. And I was like, I didn't say it because I, you know, I wanted to be polite to them. I'm like, okay, you know, yeah, I understand that. But I don't know about you guys. You ever go to conferences? The amount of time you sit around to have five to seven minutes to complete uh, a conversational chat survey on your phone is like conference time is the time, you know, like I just, I was a bit shocked, but that's the nature of the culture at that organization. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, don't mm-hmm. bother the salespeople during conference time, right? right. They're making money. And so yeah, anyway, lots of learning. And I'm but that's also built into, into the learning. sales culture because you know what sales is going to do. Like if you're in the sales buying or whatever, it's just another mm-hmm. HR program. I got to waste time to do this. I could be taking calls and buying or selling stuff. So their yeah. attitude already is a shits. Then you get into executives. What's this costing me? Yeah. Right, guys, that's all I care about. Well, so it's trying to find that time. Yeah. And on the old ones, like Phil said, like as an employee, when we did them, like a lot of times you would look at it, and I know you didn't do this, and I'm glad you said it, but there would be smaller groups, right? And then you think, well, fuck, I ain't going to do this because there's only 10 of us in this group. They know who the hell's saying what. So forget that. So none of us did it, right? Or you, it just wasn't interested. Yeah. Then there was the other one to take 45 minutes. Then it took four or five, six months to get the results. And then you kind of knew that nobody gave a shit anyway. So it wasn't going to get implemented. So as employees, you become a, a roadblock too, because you're thinking, yeah, this is great. So they're going to tell us all these great things. Oh, I want your opinion. And we're going to, and you're thinking, yeah, whatever. I'm not going to do yeah. anything with it. What do I care? Lack of action fatigue. Well, right? That's what it's that's all what about. It I don't mind yeah. taking the time if I know someone's going to do something. Otherwise, don't but waste my time. To your point, honestly, anything more than 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I think you're pushing time. People start to crank those things and they just go like, yeah, the worst, the worst things you see in surveys are those giant matrices, right? Like rank all of these. And like, how do you feel about these 17 things? On the 17th one, not too good. I'm not feeling about anything at this point. I don't want to finish any of this now. So yeah. So we just avoid all that kind of stuff. That's that's cool though. Um, Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very cool actually. I think it is kind of cool because I think a lot of yeah. people do look at, I, I know a lot of people look at, you know, the top 
100 companies in BC to work for or Ontario or in Canada, mm-hmm. you know, the best university to go to, whatever the, whatever those mean, because most of the time we're all in the same boat, we're all thinking, well, they don't change. So I'm sure that the, what kind of questions are they asking? I mean, or, you know, are people just, yeah, ABC, you know, like what, like in the university, when in doubt, pick C, right? So well, whether they're doing that are, as well. A lot of people are concerned as well that, and I hear this from a lot of people who are skeptical of the other programs. It's like, I know those companies have terrible culture. Like, exactly. So how you know, didn't tell they me might fix call mine. themselves a top employer, but like I work yeah. there. Like that's weird. Um, it doesn't. It's incongruous. Yeah, and yeah. the reason for that is how all those uh, awards work, right? None of like again, only one of them uses employee feedback besides us. And we not only do we use employee feedback, we also use a benchmark of the average Canadian's opinion about which I kind of like that too. Though I like to get an yeah, idea of how then how do I sit in the because yeah. you know I, in my own little bubble that's great. And let's say I get, let's say the scores eight, a one to 10 and I got an eight and I think, oh, fuck, eight's pretty good. But the average is 9.2. Exactly. Well, that ain't exactly. so good no more, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the other ones, like, for example, I don't know if you know the Forbes one, Forbes Canada's top employers. Yeah. So Statistica, which is a, a yeah, stats you know. and yeah, holding yeah, company. Yeah. yeah. So they do a, a survey. And to qualify, you must work for a company, I think, with more than 500 or at least more than 300 employees. And so you did this whole survey asking you about your organization. And they asked one question. What's the company that's not yours that you admire the most? So only employees from massive companies fill it out. Um, And then they can only select companies with massive numbers of employees. So that list, after, and so it was so interesting because before I started this role, I didn't know any of this stuff about any of these programs. Yeah. You know, Canada's top employer uses 20 year old criteria uh, and an editorial group. You know, uh, it's like, uh, you know, five judges that judge and decide. And I was like, eh, that's a lot of opinion. That's a lot. You know, five people Absolutely can't know subjective. every industry. And uh, yeah, right. So, um, so yeah, so that, you know, they all are a little mm-hmm. different. And, um, you know, um, they all have a lot to be desired. But again, the badge is just about reputation and recognition. And so, you know, I I keep saying we're about going beyond the badge and the badge will be valuable and it'll be useful, but we're always going beyond the badge. Um, You know, for example, some of the other services, you have to, you have to pay them to get more than a summary of the results, more, pay them more than the initial amount you paid them. If you want any kind of analysis or that's, that's just like, it's a bit of bait and switch, you know, you're really buying the badge. You're not buying the data or the insights or any of that kind yeah. of stuff. And so yeah, agree. Uh, we just wanted agree. to create something totally different. Wow. Yeah, it sounds cool, man. Very it sounds cool. like, uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's different. It's timely. I mean, you're, you're at a perfect time to do this. Cause I'm sure there's a lot of, you know, again, like our sweet spot is, is the 10 to 50, 10 to hundred people. I think there's a lot of those companies that really are in a funny spot right now. They're watching major corporations and trying to figure out how they're going to manage this, work at home, come back remote, whatever the situation is, mm-hmm. and are probably unsure yeah. of really where their employees really sit. And sometimes it's hard to ask people because it internally, it depends on what type of leader you are or whoever's leading these people is what answers they'll give you. And it is sometimes nice to have it in an anonymous format where I may be able to be a little bit more um, truthful for lack of a better, or you know, candid where I'm not gonna get thumped on and then yeah. bench it against a group of people. I like that too, though. I like to see what, I'm glad I know what I am, but what am I relative to yeah. maybe others in my industry? Because maybe I can use that as a calling card too. I mean, yeah. you know, maybe we're not, we're not as bad. Maybe we're worse than we think we are. And maybe we're better than we think we are. Yeah, I think for us, it reminds me of uh, this little little story I told about when people said, is social media a fad you know, in the late aughts? And I said, I would always say, um, anything really new and awesome works like this. A third of the people, and this is just generalization, but a third of people see the bus, they, un- they see the new thing, the bus, they understand that it's good and cool, they get on and they're rocking out and having a great time. Another third of people see all the people on the bus having a great time, go, I got to get on that bus. And a third of people get left at the bus stop. You know, and I think that's kind of what, you know, like anything that's awesome, that's kind of what we're going to see and do and, and see happening for you buddy we like that's it pretty cool i like yep, it this is too. pretty cool i think it's yeah. i think it's a neat thing i think it's timely i think it's good i think people should be doing it thanks guys yeah, yeah i appreciate that's it. that's two cents worth of opinion
we're uh, <laughs> we're gonna leave your LinkedIn and then and then you you had your email, so we'll put that in the uh, the yeah. show notes as well. And then is it okay to link your your kind of sixty second explanation? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The okay. website the website and the video would be great to just put that there. Okay. They're great resources. Yeah, so awesome. yeah, the, the, it, yeah, it's a one minute explainer video. Yeah. Everybody's got one minute to learn about something new. So exactly. And if you want a yeah. little bit more, they can listen to the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Right. awesome. Um, Kemp, thanks for joining us. It's I appreciate amazing. it, man. Thank you. Short notice, yeah, my too. Pleasure. That's great, man. Yeah. Thank you. I enjoyed awesome. it. Thanks for having me. Okay, my friend. Take care of yourself. Take care. And uh, we'll chat soon. And uh, Mr. Chang, stay on the line. Yeah. Have a great gonna... Friday. Nice, right. Kemp. Nice. You too, Take man. Care. Take care, buddy. Bye, Kemp. That's cool. It's kind of like interesting, that. right? I mean, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we keep saying it, but it's definitely timely. I think there's a, I, I really think if there's probably ever a time for employers to want to know, now like what's going on it's probably now now is a really good time it's probably now yeah. and, you, and, and yeah. again if you get the data then look at the data and and, and and get a real feel for where your employees really are at and what yeah. they what they're valuing at that moment now and if you can yeah. change change if you want to stick your you know put a stick in the mud then you can do that too it's, it's really your call but the fact that it's fast um doesn't sound brutally expensive i mean shit it, it's um and i like if we have CEOs listening, you can call me out if you want. But uh, like, I, it's funny because today I got home from um, hanging out with Kenny uh, late last night. So today, my first phone call this morning was with a CEO who was like, I think I'm going to take everybody back to the office. It, this is someone that I've, I've, you know, kind of met and talked to, worked with a long, long time ago, actually. It's not one of one of my contracts recently. And and I said, okay, walk me through this, right? And he, well, we put out a survey. He has 30, 35 employees, somewhere in that right. range, right? And um, and I said, so did you put out the survey to everybody? He said, no, no, we didn't have time for that. Because, you know, so 35 person company, they put out something to the tune of like 35 to 50 questions, right? So you're going, wow, it's a lot of questions, right? Like, questions. okay. You know, so he said, we, we picked a cohort. Okay. And he said, yeah, so when I got the answers back, they seem like they actually really want a hybrid model. And I said, okay, so why are you going back? And he goes, well, I saw the people that were on the list that we surveyed. And um, I can see, you know, like so-and-so and so-and-so. So he was able to name either, uh, it wasn't clear. He, he wouldn't answer that question because I think he knew where he, I was He knew going who it was, it. bottom line. He could figure yeah, out what... So he, he knew either he figured right. it out or he, you know. Right. So I discounted so, the answers. So he basically went, well, you know, these guys are the ones that would totally want to work from home all the time. Bunch of, you know, I said to him, listen, if you, if you already decided they're going back, why ask? Exactly. Like if you, if you're not genuinely interested, then just make the policy. What they what have are you to say, then just make a policy. Like there exactly. are lots if you of lose policies. People, you just lose say, people. we're all going you know, back come tomorrow. On back in, you know, right. like, yeah. But again, what, what, see, what, why be an asshole you know, and, and pretend that you yeah, give a yeah, shit, yeah, yeah. and yeah, then yeah. basically tell me that you don't give yeah, a shit? Yeah, but and then, here, and then you discount the ones you discount honest answers. Yeah, because well, I knew they were going to say that. Yeah, well, and so at least now you, you actually like. I mean, the normal Canadian. I feel like the normal Canadian answer you can now benchmark against. So if if your employee said, "Hey, you know what? I'm I'm a I'm a six out of ten on on a hybrid model," you know, like. I really care about my work at home and you're looking at like the national average and the national average is saying the same thing. Well, guess what now, right? Like now you've got something to benchmark against, right? So anyway, it was just, yeah, I, I, yeah. I like it. I, 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 like I do too. And again, it's not, you know, not, I'm not, you know, I'm not discounting it. It's not a complicated thing, what they're doing. It makes, it makes total sense. It is. And why is it, it's always like anything. Why does nobody ever do these things? Right, because you've been through surveys and so have I, and they yeah. took forever, and they were huge, and the results yeah. came, and then you knew nobody gave a shit anyway, and it was yeah. going to happen yeah. or maybe not, and maybe deep down they actually did care, but it became so cumbersome, and who knows what the reasons were, and who cares, right? But you know, don't waste our time. Like, if you want to know how we think, ask. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. but if we're going to yeah. tell you th how we feel, then don't discount it, right? Because I mean, yeah. what the hell have you done? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. I, I, yeah, you know, I, liked I think they've got a crack cool. at it. I think. Yeah. Again, I think their timing is really good, and I think their model is good. I think they've kept it. It sounds like they've kept it pretty reasonable, yeah. and uh, they got a crack at it. I like it. Good on them. I like it a lot. Good on them. It's awesome. That's it, man. Okay, why don't you stop talking? Yeah, it looks like you're going to hack up a lung if uh, we're not careful here. So Yeah, I am. I am. Yeah. Yeah.
Kenny's been covering for me. I've been muting myself and hacking in the background. So yeah, it's okay. Kemp yeah. talks anyway. So it's not like we had to, you know, force him to talk. So that made it yeah, easy yeah. too. Right. So yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. worked out. Cause I was watching yeah. thinking, okay, he's not going to make it. No, no. All right. All right. My friend, you go have some, uh, ninjom in hot water. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. It's exactly I think the Italians right. invented that. Maybe you guys stole it. I don't know. You know, kind of make like the pasta trade. You got this. It's got Chinese one. writing on it now. Right, That's well, all that matters. You know, I know because maybe we are sloppy writers. Nobody could read it. They yeah, it maybe. Chinese anyhow. Or maybe you're already writing Chinese. You know what? Maybe I don't. Maybe we invented it. I don't even maybe. know. Uh, who's maybe. to say? Maybe. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Okay, take care of yourself. Go hack up okay. a lung. Ciao, buddy. <laughs> Ciao, Have later. a nice weekend. Thanks, man. You too. Ciao. Ciao. Bye.